Hi there Cherokee owners, today in our 2019 Jeep Cherokee we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's diode wiring kit. There are going to be five main components you'll need to flat tow your vehicle behind your motorhome. One of the first and most important items is going to be our tow bar here. The tow bar is going to be your attachment that connects your motorhome to your vehicle. In addition to your tow bar, you're also going to need safety cables, which is a supplementary attachment between your motorhome and your vehicle. Now our Nighthawk here does come with safety cables included with it and they go in these nice channels underneath keeping it nice and neat. Now if you've got a different tow bar, you may need to purchase safety cables separately. We'll also need a base plate, which is going to install on our vehicle and provides the attachment point for our tow bar to hook to our vehicle. We'll also need our diode wiring, which is going to take all of our lighting signals from our motorhome, transfer it back to the vehicle, so that way the lights at the back of our vehicle is going to mimic the lights on our motorhome so everybody behind us knows our intentions when going down the road. And lastly, you're going to need your supplemental braking system. This is going to apply the brakes in your vehicle when you apply the brakes in your motorhome to assist it when stopping. Your diode wiring kit is going to isolate all of your electrical connections for your tail light circuits from your vehicle and your motorhome. So this way, whenever you're in your vehicle and you turn your signals on or hit your brakes, It'll light the lights, but none of those currents will feed up to our connector at the front and vice versa. So if we're towing our vehicle in our motor home, whenever we activate our signals in our motor home, it goes down our wiring, activates our lights, but it can't backfeed into our system due to the diodes. This is nice because it's a fully integrated system that retains a factory look. So we've got no light sticking on top. Everything's mounted behind our tail light assemblies here and we get all of our lighting functions from our motor home mimicked back here on our vehicle simply by just using those turn signals in our motor home like we would normally drive. It's important for people around you and behind you to know your intentions when going down the road so that way everybody can remain safe. Not only is that important so everybody can see what your intentions are, but it's also required in most states so this way you'll be DOT compliant. Now this kit does come with everything you need to get it installed. However, at the front you're gonna have a four pole connection, which will work fine. You can transfer all of your lighting signals with that. However, the most common connection for a flat toe setup is going to be a six pole connector. So if you are intending to use a six pole connector to get the additional circuits that you can use for optional accessories, you will need to purchase that connector separately. This is a relatively quick and simple installation. Let's go through it together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. The best time to install your diode wiring is while you've got your fascia removed after you put your base plate on. This is going to give you more room to work, so it'll lessen the amount of time it's going to take for the installation. We'll begin our installation by removing our taillight assemblies on both the passenger and driver's side. There's two bolts that hold your taillight assembly in. We're going to use a T30 torque socket to remove those. You can then just pull your taillight rearward to get it to remove. On the bottom of our taillight assembly, you'll find your connector. You need to remove the connector here by pulling back on the lock tab, then pressing in on the release lever and disconnecting it. We can now set our taillight assembly aside and we're gonna re remove the other side the exact same way. We'll then take our harness. We wanna strip back the sheathing that's on it so we can expose our wires. On our driver's side, we'll then wanna cut about halfway between what we exposed on the solid white wire, which is your driver's side turn signal and stop lamp wire, and the white wire with yellow stripe, which is your tail lamp circuit for the driver's side. Once you've got those split, take the blue spade terminals on your diodes and crimp one onto each one of these wires. Now we'll take our wiring harness that comes in our kit, and we want to feed this up to our taillight assembly here. There's a nice large opening so you can reach underneath and just kind of feed it up. Or if you're having a little bit of a difficulty getting it up and then grabbing it from this side, you can take a coat hanger or something and feed it down this way, grab it on the bottom, hook your wire onto it and then pull it up that way. Your wiring does have four pole flat connector ends on it. We're not gonna be using that four flat end on our setup here. If you're putting a braking system in and doing a full setup, you're likely going to be using a six pole connector instead of a four pole. So you can cut this off now if you want. That'll make moving your wiring from down below up into your taillight area a little bit easier because it'll be smaller. So it'll feed through those tighter areas better. I've got my wiring routed up. 
You have four wires on your harness. You have a yellow, brown, white, and a green. The green one I went ahead and separated and left down below because we don't need the green up here. That's actually gonna go on our other side. You can go ahead and route it up here and then just pull it back down later is however you wanna do it. Once you've got it routed up here though, we're gonna take the yellow butt connector that comes in our kit. That's gonna crimp onto both of our brown and white wires and our yellow wire, we're gonna crimp another blue connector on. Give you an example on how to crimp a wire on now so you can see how the spade terminals will attach to your wiring. You wanna start by stripping it back. I like to give it a little twist to make sure the strands all go inside our spade terminal. And then we'll use our crimpers to crimp a spade terminal on. For our white and brown wire with the yellow one, that one's a larger spade terminal. Because after we stripped them, we twisted the white wire and the brown wires together. And since it's larger, it's able to accommodate both of those wires twisted together and crimped inside. Now that we've got all of our wiring cut with spade terminals on it, we can start installing our diodes. The single terminal end is always gonna to go towards your lights, so that's gonna be our connector end here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. So this is our white and yellow wire. On the other side, we're gonna put the other end of our white and yellow wire. And since our white and yellow is our tail lamp circuit, we're gonna be using the brown with white wire on the other spade terminal. We'll then connect our other diode in a similar fashion. And the yellow wire is gonna to go to this because this is our stop turn circuit. And then what I like to do, you can take your diodes and stick them on the insides here. However, I found that often when you stick them on the inside, it can make the wire a little bit too short to where it won't connect. So typically we just take the adhesive here on the back off of each one. And we're just gonna stick both of those diodes together. This will just help keep them from rattling around. We're now over here on the passenger side. I've already gone ahead and made our connections. It's gonna be exactly the same, except for our wire colors are gonna be a little different. We're gonna cut the white wire with green circuit, which is our stop and tail lamp circuit. And we're gonna cut the white wire with gray stripe, which is our tail lamp circuit. On the other side, we'll connect our green wire to our stop lamp circuit. We're gonna connect the white wire that was connected to our brown wire on the driver's side to our tail lamp circuit. Let's take a look down below now so you can see how I got our wiring routed over to the passenger side. So here we have our three wires that went up on our driver's side. You got your yellow, your brown, and your white. The yellow wire we connected to our stop turn circuit on the driver's side. And then we took our white wire and our brown wire, twisted them together and connected those to the tail lamp circuit on our driver's side. We then took these wires and routed them across to our passenger side, just following our hitch. Once we got over here to our passenger side, you'll see our green wire. So we had separated this from the other three wires and we routed it up to our tail light assembly. What we also did here is the white wire that we routed over here. We had to come a little bit further down our harness. We cut it and then we routed that white wire up with our green wire. Now it's important that this white wire that's routed up is the same section of wire that's still attached to the brown wire on our driver's side. There will still be white wire further down your harness that we're gonna be routing to the front of the vehicle. That section is not gonna to connect to anything back here. Now that we've made all of our connections back at our taillight assemblies, we're gonna be routing the rest of the wire towards the front. To do that, I just kind of followed our frame rail we went up above our steering and suspension components. All right. You want to avoid anything excessively hot like your exhaust here and any moving components like your suspension components. So we routed it above all of these components. We came out the other side of our suspension on top here. And from there, we just went below our fuel tank, staying above our undershield. Coming forward, you can see here where we continued forward. kept going forward from there. And from here, we followed our fuel lines up to the engine compartment. This is another area where you might wanna use a fish wire like a coat hanger to help pull it up. Our wiring came up here on the passenger side, right up along the firewall. From there, we zip tied it to the existing factory harness going across towards the driver's side. 
From there, we routed it down the side of our fuse box here. Left a little slack here in the middle. This is a great little section here to hook up your braking system wiring if you are gonna be installing a braking system because you will need access to this. So we've got a little bit we can access there. Zip tied it down the support beam here. Went down underneath our headlight and came down here across towards the center where we just kind of wrapped it up. And this is the location where we're gonna be mounting our six pole connector. The routing of your wiring is complete. All we have left to do is then connect our ground wire. If you're gonna be using a six pole connector like we are, you can cut off the other end if you haven't done so already. Just go ahead and tie it up here. And now we need to connect our ground wire. We then took our white wire here. We cut it just like we did at the back. So you can see here where we cut a section of this white wire out. So this is the white wire going up towards the front of the vehicle. That's gonna to connect to our six pole connector. We need this to be grounded. We're gonna attach this right to our ground stud here on our battery. So just go ahead and set that on there and then reinstall your nut. Now this section of white wire here, this is gonna be in the middle here. It's gonna go from here to where we had cut it towards the back and this isn't gonna be used for anything and that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything just to have the extra length of wire down in there. So we can just tuck these down until we're ready to access them for our braking system. Now that we've got everything run up here, we can go ahead and reinstall our fascia if you had it removed while you were doing your base plate. And then you can either trim your wiring to length and connect it to your six pole connector, or if you're just gonna be using the four pole connector that came with your kit that was pre-attached, you're all done. We've gone ahead and connected ours to a six pole connector. If you need a six pole connector, you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com. For our, our particular setup here, this six way connector came with our tow bar. So if you're doing a whole flat tow setup, it might be worth your while to purchase a tow bar that has a six-way connector included if you're gonna be using this kit. You can now trim your wiring to length and then start connecting to your six-pole connector. We'll connect our white wire to the pin labeled GD, our brown wire to the pin labeled TM. This next black wire here is for our braking system, so you won't have this unless you install the Invisibrake system. If you were gonna do that, we installed it to the terminal labeled S, which is our brake circuit which will go up to the front. So if you are doing the invisible brake, keep that in mind. You'll connect your green wire to the right turn signal, which is labeled RT. Your yellow wire to the left turn signal, which is labeled LT. And our center pin is gonna remain empty unless you install a charge line kit. Once you've got all of your connections made on your six pole connector, I recommend that you fill it in with dielectric grease like we have there to help prevent any corrosion. We'll slide our dust boot over our connector. And then I like to use electrical tape to wrap it all up to help seal moisture out to ensure the longest lasting connection possible. And now you can connect it to your base plate. Your base plate has the hardware included with it to mount it up. It's gonna be a couple of self-tapping screws just like this. Now you can see here that we've got our connector mocked up that the boot does kind of go into our fascia a little bit. So you will likely have to trim around it. And I just use a pair of tin snips and just snipped out some of the little sections until everything cleared. When you're reinstalling your fascia, you can just kind of hold it up here and you can clearly see where your components are gonna be. So you can just take a pen and mark that out while you're holding it up. We'll now finish up our diode insulation by using an eight millimeter socket to tighten on our hardware and get our connector in place. And then you can either hook this to your motor home and operate all the lights in your motor home to verify the lights are working properly on the back of your vehicle, or you can hook it into a tester like the one we have here. You'll want to make sure you have your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. And with everything working properly, you can then go back and button up any of your wiring with some zip ties and you're ready to hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Diode Wiring Kit on your 2019 Jeep Cherokee.